my coven here on my channel where today we will be doing our annual Halloween special. If you are new here, you may or may not know, last year I did a killer boxy charm video, and this year, well, it's become a horror story in itself, so it's already set the stage for us. Why not jump into the festive season and give you an early video this weekend to celebrate All Hallows Eve? I even went out of my way this year to make sure I had the appropriate garments to wear for you. Cloaks were apparently out of style this year, but a apparently shoulderless, cold shoulder as they call it, um, boo sweater was very appropriate. Unfortunately with the camera angle you can't really see it, but here you go, here's a little boo from my boobies. Buckle up kids because the puns only get worse from here. As clearly I am looking like Elphaba Witch this season, I am excited to dive through these killer BoxyCharm items with you. Today I am going to be going through my stash and letting you know some things with BoxyCharm that I just think are to die for. And some items that I'm still trying to figure out if they are going in my boo bin. Yes. There is a boob in. Some of these products are going to be a trick and some of them are going to be a treat. I'm going to do my best to make my face look as nice as I can even using items that I'm unsure about or historically haven't proven to be my favorites. So dive into my cauldron with me and BoxyCharm as we go into this holiday Halloween special. If you're curious how I started this resting witch face, I went in this morning with the Milk Milk Makeup Matcha Detoxifying Mask. This is giving me all the Elphaba witchy vibes today. Being that this is the season for tricks and treats, grab yourself a little treat, maybe a trick or two. I have here a lemon water to keep my Elphaba zestiness going and a little bit of tea. Is it a brew? Is it not a brew? I'm not gonna tell you what's really in here. Let's get bootyful together with BoxyCharm. Cheers to the brews! First I have to let this finish sitting down for the good 10-15 minutes and then we're gonna move on. When I remove my Elphaba mask, I should warn you, terror is coming ahead because... Well, 2020 has proven to be a nightmare within itself and I definitely have some stress breakouts right up front. So I'm gonna look like a pumpkin gourd. But I'm hoping that these products from BoxyCharm help me to look my most bootyful. We're gonna find out. Eh, to perform my first spell, I'm going to be removing the mask and getting ready with some base products. Let's go through it together. Okay, I warned you. It's terrifying right now. I know. Don't worry. That's why we're relying on our friends at BoxyCharm to help us bootify this look. Starting some of this skelly fun today, I'm gonna be jumping into something that is finally matte from BoxyCharm. If you recall from last year's video, I had nothing but dewy products as far as the eye could see that I was applying to my face. And as an oily skin combo-y girl now, um, whew, by the afternoon, I looked like a grease ball. So today I'm gonna start with something matte with this Grown Alchemist Matte Moisturizer. And I think I like it. I'm still discovering how I feel about it. This little potion here is newer to my collection and I'm hoping it's not what made me break out down here. I really think that is mask and stress. But we're doing some investigating today. It's a thicker product as you can see. I've already put some of it on my face and on the fingers you could tell. I still swear it smells like suntan lotion and it kind of feels like that when you're putting it on. Now, which is, as many of you know, we can't just jump right into the next piece of the potion. We really have to allow this to settle. So, be right back. Now that this has had just a little bit of time to settle into the skin, I'm going to be moving on to the next step. And I got this from a BoxyCharm pop-up add-on, whatever you want to call it. This is the Becca First Light Priming Filter. And I've always liked this on my skin. I haven't used it in a while though. So I'm excited to see how this works with a matte moisturizer. You know how we come up with our own concoctions here. We gotta figure out what works and what doesn't. Get some dead man's toes and just rub it into your skin. I like to sometimes just do these little padding motions. 
push it into the skin. We're trying to make it all look nice and not bumpy like a gourd. Nobody pay attention to this acne down here. Don't do it. Jumping into the sponge that I have been using since I got it from my past BoxyCharm. I'm gonna use this sponge here. I can't remember what brand this is from. Getting beautiful with BoxyCharm is sometimes easy and sometimes not. I only have two foundations in my collection right now that are things that I've gotten from BoxyCharm because I did get rid of a dreaded foundation that was just really bad on my skin and a lot of my coven let me know that it didn't work for their skin either and it got the cut in their beauty space too. The Becca foundation that was crazy thick, I tried so many ways to make that work. It is out of my beauty space, out of my life, and now I have two others that I have gotten from BoxyCharm. One from the add-ons and one from my actual box. Now, I've used this previously. This is the QMS Tinted Foundation. It's technically a tinted day cream that if I wanted to look like a pumpkin today, I could use this. But I am trying to go for success with this. I want the makeup to look good. So I'm gonna be trying for you first time on camera this Natasha Denona Transform Matte Pore Vanishing Matte Foundation. That's right, two things that are matte from BoxyCharm. Yeah, I had to go out of my way to get this one, but that's fine. As long as it's an option, I can finally use some matte products from Boxy. The shade I got was Light Medium 40N. It's a neutral shade. I'm more of a neutral undertone. I think this is a bit too dark for me still, but I can make it work. But because I'm having such a gourd of a breakout right down here and it's so distracting, I'm also going to start with some concealer that I got from BoxyCharm. And this happens to be something that I can tell you I think is to die for. I bought it on my own and I was so happy when BoxyCharm got it for us. This is Too Faced Born This Way Conceal Contour Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. It's got all of the claims here on the back, all of the goodness that this potion claims to do for our faces. I haven't had breakouts like this in such a long time, but an old school trick I used to do was to put on concealer first, then foundation. Normally, the way I like to apply my makeup is foundation first, then concealer for highlighting and brightening and smoothing and all the things, but when we are covering up some grave mistakes on our faces, we just have to go full in and this is a heavy coverage if i have really bad blemishes like i do right now an older school trick that i tried on top of this is to let this settle a little bit longer so it'll really get into like all the nooks and crannies in the area because it is more cyst like acne than it is just a small red pop-up something else these blemishes could be is a haunting of the menopause because a lot of you know i am going through hormone replacement therapy this year so you know the haunting of our face this year i'm just doing what i can I don't know why when I have a pump, this is how I choose to put on the foundation. I know some people still like to put it in some kind of dish or directly on the sponge. I just seem to like to do it like this. This is a runnier foundation than I thought it would be. Like you can see it dripping down like blood. I find when I spread this product though, it goes so nicely. It just moves with your skin. I put on more than I usually do because I'm looking for a thicker coverage to cover up all of these little monsters. When your mortal body is paler than the potion you're putting on your face, make sure to take it down your neck or drag it. In person, this really looks nice. It doesn't look crazy matte and it could be some of the things I have underneath it, but there's definitely some luminosity that gives your face some life. So. Next, back into the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. This one, by the way, is in the shade Pearl. It is a paler tone and I like it to be paler than my foundation so I can make things match a little bit better if need be, like I need to with this foundation, but also it highlights pieces of my face. But today we're clearly gonna be going for a little bit more of a glam look for the All Hallows Eve festivities. And we're covering up our pumpkin gourd pimples. I like to highlight when I'm doing a full face, just to give myself a little bit more dimension. Again, if you have large acne on your face, like I do right now, let that sit the longest so it has more time to really work its coverage up and work with your skin. For my witches in the audience that have difficulty keeping foundation on your nose, 
Another tip you can do, especially with this concealer because it is so good and so high coverage if you want it to be, is another tip is before you put on foundation, put on concealer first on your nose and then put the foundation over the top of it. That will help it from moving through the day if you are an oily skin witch that has that problem as well. I have done that trick a few times and it works splendidly. The sponge is also really nice because it's letting me remove any excess foundation and concealer, but also push enough into my skin that is giving me some nice, even coverage. Now we need to move fast with this resting witch face because we have to powder down, or at least I do because I am a little bit more of an oily witch. So I'm going to be jumping into a powder that I'm still trying to decide how I feel about all over the face. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Translucent Loose Powder. Wands up. I like to take a wider, fluffier brush when I'm doing this so I don't get too much powder in there. Tap it off. Kind of press into the skin. Sometimes I like to swipe, but if I'm feeling like the foundation is a little bit stickier or if my skin's being a little bit more oily, depends on the time of year. Pressing motion with your wand works much better than a swiping one if you're oily or still a little sticky because you don't want to move the foundation and concealer. Wipe off any of the undead that happens to fall off on your clothes or your shoulders. And I'll be honest, at this point, I think this is all looking very nice together. Now, let's move on to the brows because then I like to let my face sit. If you've heard of baking or cooking, get your cauldrons ready because what we're doing right now while we do our brows next after we powder down is allowing your face time to settle. Unless you are a zombie, your skin is usually going to be about 97 to 98 degrees. So what we're going to be doing is cooking the makeup for just a little bit longer while we're doing our brows. Now I've got some tricks and treats in my brow collection here, so let's talk about what we're going to be putting on these hairy monsters. Ghouls just wanna have fun but we have to get close to the mirror sometimes to investigate how everything is looking. This pore vanishing foundation from Natasha is really helping those forward front pores that I tell you all the time are right there for me that I see a lot with makeup that gets too cakey or just doesn't settle well with my products. So, so far I am very pleased. I prefer to start my brows with a dead man's finger, but I don't have that available to me right now and BoxyCharm has yet to give us anything that great yet. So I'm gonna start with this Winky Lux pencil that I've let you know is amazing. It is a cooler toned brow product that I've learned I really enjoy using to start a brow arch and look for color. And then we're gonna fill in darker because since last year I've gone even darker with my hair. So we need to go to the dark side. While a boo babe can love a good cool toned creamy pencil, the hard part about a lot of these thicker end pencils is that it's hard to do the front part of the brow and make it look like individual hairlines. So a lot of times I love a thinner pencil to go into, but I've had none of that from BoxyCharm. We've got the arch going, we've kind of got the shape and some color filled in. And then the next thing I love to do is go into my brow gal trio that we got forever ago. keep trying to get into the latest trends of brows, which are those bushy looking brows where you can see like the individual lines, but they look messy bushy, but in a pretty way. Um, I'm apparently too basic of a witch for that because I can't figure out how to make my brows not look like hairy little caterpillars. To go even darker to the dark side, I now like to pull out my brow bar by Rima. This is a True Glam Brow Makeover Kit in the shade Dark, and then I jump into the Black and Dark Brown. And I know what you're thinking, which please, that is way too many steps. I agree with you. However, while you are a witch on camera, when I go through this portal every week with you guys, the lighting and editing always makes the brows look a bit different on camera than they are in person. So if I'm on camera, we go to the darkest side possible. The thing about this product is you're going to see some of this product's undead fall on your face. To clean up the corpses off of your face, grab a fluffy wand and go whoop, whoop, whoop. And if you make that sound effect, whoop, it works much better. Trust me, it's part of the incantation with this spell. 
Now our resting witch faces have had time to cook in the skin. So, let's start making our face look like hollow skeletons, shall we? The next piece of my potion is something that I'm not sure if it's my blood type, but I'm going to give it the old witchy try again. This is the Too Faced Cocoa Contour Palette. While these look really nice, I don't find myself pulling this into my morning rituals. Now is it because it's a blood sucker, or is it because I've just not found the right way to work with it yet? Hard to say, so wands up. I'm going to try to use this for starting the chisel of the cheekbones and some light contour. I'm not going to go too heavy with the contour today. We're going to do light contour to look slightly gaunt, not fully gaunt. I'm also using a Luxie brush that is more of a rounded tip and fluffier versus something that's a little bit more chiseled for that harsh contour that you usually see. This is going to be lighter and hopefully make this witch look a little bit more youthful, like I just sucked the lives out of some children, you know, like that. Using this light contour with this type of brush is actually working really good with this foundation. I've mostly used this with the Luxie brushes that are more tapered, tightly packed, and leave a much harsher line. There's not as fluid. So I may have found the right wand to use for this. I am pleasantly surprised. Not sure how it's going to do for the nose contour, but that is a spell in itself. So let's see how this does. As many of you fabulous witches know, half of the spell every morning we do is the blending and smoothing to look our witchiest. So sometimes you need to take your time with this process. Had a cousin once leave the house with her contour not blended. House fell on her, real talk. For nose contour, I'm using this Billion Dollar Brows Dual Ended Brush. I'm gonna take the flat side and pop into the two lighter shades for highlighting. And blending down the sides of the nose, on the lids, all those good things. Doing more of a packing and then pressing motion. <sighs> this palette smells like children. <laughs> or chocolate, whichever. I am enjoying this bit of potion right here, and I didn't think I cared for this much, but if I was using the wrong wands, that could have been a struggle. This seems like this was a nice spell to create those cheekbones. Now let's move on to look a little less undead. While face palettes appear to still be a trend this year with BoxyCharm, I have quite a few options for bronzers, and I kind of want to dive into something that I honestly believe might end up in a graveyard in the future, but I won't know until I try more. And that is the Ace Beauté face palette. I'm pretty confident that I really enjoy the newer piece to my collection, the Pretty Vulgar palette. I let you guys know in my last video, I really, really liked. We all know how die hard I am for the Too Faced bronzer. This particular one is the Chocolate Gold Soleil one that has a little bit of a luminosity to it because this witch likes to glow when she wants. This smooths all the pores and makes me look beautiful. However, I'm a little worried that this one is going to make me look like a werewolf because of the color story. It is so red toned, it is so deep. What's a witch to do? So what do we do, ladies? Keep calm, carry a wand, and move on. So we're gonna go into this and see what kind of magic we can create. This is the Baddington brush that I like to use when I'm trying to be a little bit fluffier with my bronzer. But without being too fluffy, because I have really fluffy ones and I'm worried that this will go everywhere. So it's already falling apart. Come over here into the two lighter shades and mix them. I'm gonna be holding with the back of the wand so I don't add too much pressure. But at least warmer toned. I'm not adding anything else to the brush, just kind of pulling it around the perimeter of the face. Oof, we're not gonna look like Jack Skellington anymore. We are adding the warmth back in. A ghoulish tip for my ladies that are working on their double, double chin is trouble. Take one of your contour brushes, go into a little bit deeper of a shade, whether with contour or bronzer, and give yourself a little carve. No matter how much weight this witch loses, I'm always gonna have my little waddle down here, so we just do a little spell for this. Double, double chin is trouble. Blend it away with bronzer and contour. Wanna look a little bit more chiseled? Go all the way back and draw it out. 
These are the magic spells we need to know, right, ladies? The little bit of a darker shade down here is just gonna appear like a shadow. But don't forget to blend. I'm nervous to add more to this because it would be warm really fast. So I think I'm gonna stop here and then move on to the rosiness. Hydrate reminder, if you're here for the booze, have a sip. This Halloween, I'm going to be living on the fright side and trying a blush that I think I enjoy, but I've not had a lot of time to play with. This is the Kosas blush. Well, this side is the blush and this side is the highlighter. Hmm, I don't know about that. Papaya 1972 is the color shade that I got and I really like the blush, but it's an old wives tale if we're gonna call that highlight. Let's see if a scare is born. This is a really pretty color for spring and summer for sure. I tend to like a little bit of a warmer blush for the fall festivities, but I am not mad at this and it tends to go really well with my complexion. I'm going to go back in with just a tad more of the bronzer and just warm some of that back up. There's never any harm in going back and forth in your spell to get the correct application. The foundation is sitting nicely with all of this layering. I am very impressed with the foundation and everything under so far. Summoning you in for a close-up, I am really enjoying how some of this is really looking. I am not much of a matte bronzer girl these days. I tend to like a little bit more life on my face. I'm looking a little deadpan in my mind, but for what the product is supposed to do, I am very impressed with how this bronzer is looking, but I have to take such a light hand. I still wonder if this is going to stay in my witching space, or if I need to consider passing this on to someone that I think would use it more. Undecided at this moment. The blush is also nice, but it definitely doesn't give me any extra life as well. I think it's because I've been gravitating to something on my face that's gonna have some luminosity from within. But for matte, we're not too bad. These are some of the most matte products that I believe we've gotten from BoxyCharm in many, many moons. So I almost don't know how to handle it. But I think this is all applying and sitting together really nicely. It's a very pleasant surprise. We can pretend this is highlighter for a second and see if it's a trick or a treat, but I think it's a trick because I don't believe this is going to be enough highlighter for me, but we shall see. Going in with a clean brush that I got from Boxy, I'm gonna dip over here into this. And I've shown you guys swatches before where I believe this is some boo sheet, personally. I don't think this is very glowy. I think it's more of a powder with luminescent properties. Okay, I guess there's a little bit here, because if you're comparing, this is the side I have nothing on, and this is the side I just put that on. Questionable. This is suspect. Third or fourth application, I don't even know. This witch feels played. I'm gonna try to even it out by coming over here and just not tapping anything off. I'm starting to see some glow when I press it on without anything, but this has a lot of undead coming out. As you can see, lots of fallout and fluff everywhere. If I don't get anything after that, this is dead to me. Okay. So you just coat it up an insane amount, and then you can finally start to see the glow. That sounds like a trick, not a treat see this being maybe a decent nose highlight since we both know I tend to go in very hard on nose highlights sometimes. I have literally built these up so much for them to finally start showing it's a bad Halloween joke. Listen, this witch is just gonna creep it real with you and I'm starting to look real creepy crepey and it's from adding too much powder on top of each other to see any glow, you know? This witch just didn't have my candy, so I think I'm gonna trick or treat myself over to something that gives me a little bit more of the glow I like. If I'm not glowing like Casper, like a friendly ghost, what am I doing here? 
I have two loose highlighters here, and a lot of you know loose highlighters aren't my favorite. They tend to have a lot of undead fall everywhere, and the cleanup is such a mess. I actually have two loose highlighters here that I had on standby in case I needed a little something extra this holiday season, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use both. She complains about all the glow she's previously gotten from BoxyCharm, gets some matte products, and then adds more glow. Yes, I am a tortured soul, but it's all for the booze and fun, right? The two I have here, one is an Anastasia product and one is a Fenty product. To creep it real with you, the main reason I'm gonna jump into this Arches Couture is not only because it is beautiful, but it is also a purple dream. Literally, that's the name, Purple Dream. And I don't pull out a purple highlighter except for Halloween. So, if you got it, haunt it. Cheer in the cauldron. Cheer in the cauldron. Tap it off because the glow is intense. I definitely see the purple hues really marrying and blending well with the pink tones that are on my face already. So this was a perfect combination. And it adds a little iridescent trick to it, tricking the eye a little bit to showcase a little bit of purple tones for the festive holiday season. And I know what you're thinking, where else would you put more highlight? Do you think this costume wore itself? No. This Casper ghost is gonna glow. There are sparkles in here for days. Woo! And it is a golden highlight. So I'm using the same brush to mix in with the purple so it'll just be a little extra pop. Up close, this looks like liquid gold. That's the trick I was looking for. The Fenty highlighter that I used for these shoulders is in the shade 24 Cray. I've said this before, but the glowy products that are loose like this are just not my blood type. For the specific reason that their undead falls all over my beauty space and my clothes a lot because I am a messy witch. I just am. Here in my cursed witch workshop, I tend to now spray down my face if I'm seeing some dryness or any kind of lines coming through, specifically because my skin has been changing thanks to the haunting of the menopause. So I have two types of setting sprays here that that I am thinking about. Well, technically, I have a third, but <sighs> ends up on my boobin more than I like to admit. The Urban Decay All Nighter I did not get from BoxyCharm. This would be a booper because this is really good, but they haven't given it to us yet. It's beautiful for setting down my makeup and making things last. That is also a trick I like to do while I'm in the middle of my makeup. After setting down all of the foundations and then powders on top, it's always nice to do a quick manifesting spray to let everything settle together and become one. But all of the products that I keep getting from my friends at Boxy are glowy, ghastly products that tend to make an oil slick girl look like a goblin. However, because I've been working with so many matte products today, I think we might be able to try one of these. This is the Skin & Co Truffle Therapy. It has an illuminating truffle skin refresh mist. The problem with this is when you spray it down, a lot of times you will see streaks on your face for a while and then they disappear like magic. However, there have been a few times where the magic doesn't work and you just see like crying lines down your face when it's actually this product. This spell is gonna call for something a little newer to my collection. This is the Ciate London Everyday Vacay Setting Mist, a very luminescent product. I don't wanna be too dewy, she says, while her shoulders glow like the sun. Or full moon. While these shoulders may look like a full glow from a full moon, this might help my face to really kind of balance everything out and look dewy goddessy instead of dead and wretched. Ooh. It's a nice finer mist and it does smell like coconut, but remember ladies, this is the time of your makeup where you do not bellow at the children that you have in cages that you're going to eat for dinner. Don't yell at them. Don't yell at the warlock in your house or other witches in your house. Allow the spell to work. Don't move your face and add more lines to your face. We're too bootyful for that. Sometimes you have to cast a spell with wind to make it go faster. Now for my friends in the audience who are one-eyed monsters, you may not have as many things to choose from for the next piece of your makeup, which is the eyes. The windows to your soul, no matter how dark it may be. 
how many of you still love and can't wait to reach for the Illuminati palette? How many of you are so excited for this this Halloween? That was a joke. That was my trick, not my treat. Because a lot of you know, I told you guys in my recent video, this is definitely the biggest Halloween joke I have seen in a while in my boxy charm box. This may even make not only the boob end this year, but this may make one of my worst items to have received from boxy charm at year end videos. And if you don't remember, be sure to be subscribed and ring the bell so you don't miss out on my year-end upcoming specials with BoxyCharm. This is only one of many. I have quite a few options here in front of me that I'd really like to try for this fall festival season. Pulling out all my spell books, I'm figuring out what concoction and recipe I want to put on these eyes today. I have a tendency to just open up a bunch of palettes that I'm excited to use and leave them all out and see what works. I have no plans for this. A nice ritual to start a great eye look for me and the way I like to do my eyes is to get a fluffy wand and go into a more neutral skin tone to just kind of lay down a base over the concealers and powders that I have put on my face thus far. Set us up for success, really. The Zoeva Caramel Palette has a beautiful shade to begin with. The creaminess of this product really gets into the crease and inner parts of my lid where maybe some other grittier products tend to leave streaks. I really enjoy the formula of this piece of my potion today. I don't know if it would be right on this Halloween special if I didn't go into an eyeshadow palette that BoxyCharm gave us specifically. This is the Hello Charmer palette. I don't believe everybody received this, but I was happy to get this. I have found this palette to be a bit inconsistent as I have reviewed before. Some of them are really nice shadows and some of them are a bit patchy. So I'm going to start my eye look with the Cup of Joe, mostly on the crease and outer corners just to start building an eye look. This is a nice transition shade. I'm also using a Moda Pro brush that is one of the originals I received from BoxyCharm back in my younger witching days. This is the BMX 430 crease brush. This is a beautiful wand to spread the pigment to the spells. In Halloween of Haunting's Past, I've always tended to lean more into the pumpkin side of my festivities than I have anything else. But this year, I think I'm going to go to Frankenstein's Monster and go a little bit more green toned this time of year, which will give me a grand opportunity to go into this Ace Beauté Vintage Dawn palette and really dive into that cactus shade. Very curious how this will work with the rest of my makeup because this palette has also been pretty inconsistent in history. In previous witching reviews, I've let you know that this is a bit more of an inconsistent palette and I've only lightly reached into it. Go into this cactus shade here with another Moda Pro brush. The Cup of Joe shade was a very easy blend, so I'm curious how this is going to lay with the rest of this or if this is as spreadable, as blendable, as smooth. What I can say is I'm picking up a lot of product to really build up this shade, especially on this outer corner, and I am witchingly pleased that I don't see a lot of the corpses falling down. I thought I would have more vampire jokes to make in this video, but um, they all suck. <laughs> don't forget, witches and warlocks, half the spell is blending and building portal that is the YouTubes tend to make it look like it all happens within 15 minutes. No. No. That is a witchy lie. Build and blend. Build and blend. I like this green color a lot, but it takes a lot to build it, and then I have to go back and forth to blend with another color, and then it pulls some of that other color away, and they're not blending as much. So I, I see some patchiness here, and it is sucking the life out of me right now. I have been here blending and adding and blending and adding for what feels like an eternity. And I don't know if I'm very pleased with what I'm getting so far. It seems a little inconsistent on each side and not smooth. I'm creeping it real with you right now and I am just not terribly impressed with this green shade. I have worked with it and worked with it for more minutes than I care to admit. Now I'm gonna be moving on. Ugh. 
to some more heavy lifting. This is the Editor palette, the New England one with the autumnal hues, and this green is just speaking to my soul. If you ran out of dead men's toes, don't forget you can use your finger to go into a shimmery shade. However, these tend to be, while these look beautifully green and scaly, sometimes it can be a bit chunky when you're applying it with your finger. Seeing it's a little inconsistent closer down to my lid. It could be because there was less product on that part of my finger. So don't be afraid to go back in and take a little bit off and delve right back onto it. Get the skeletons off my face. If you're out of dead man's toes and you're out of dead man's hands, make sure you use the opposite appendage to apply your shimmer shadow and it will make your application much easier going to go back in with the same brush I was using for the cactus shade and just see if I can smooth out the crease a bit because yes you are going to get some shimmer up there if your lids are anything like mine. I have a ghoulish idea. Since I normally go in with a lot of orange tones on my lid up into the crease and blow it out a lot, what if we switched it up this year, did the green on top and then the orange on bottom? And that'll give us more opportunities to see, is this going in the boob bin? I'm a little frightened, but let's do it together, witches. These are more detail brushes that I plan to use to see what works best with some of these orange shades. These green ones are Alamar brushes I got from BoxyCharm, and this one over here is a Luxie brush I also got from BoxyCharm. Let's go into this Grand Canyon shade. I know you might think I'm out of my gourd, but this pumpkin shade is very pigmented. I have a very wide werewolf eye shape. They're very round and very large. So I am still taking this back a little into the green out here just for some blending opportunities. I feel like I'm tight lining with orange right now, right under here, and this is very bold. Now I'm gonna be going in with this orange shade. This might be the most pumpkiniest orange shade I could have picked. Headless Horseman, how you doing? I had no idea this was going to be as bright as it is. Considering how much work that green one was, I had no idea this was going to be so bold. The other one took layer upon layer upon layer. The orange is way more pigmented than the green. I cannot believe how much a Headless Horseman I look like right now. These just, compared to this green, oh my gosh. And they're both matte shades, so I'm kind of shocked at the differences between the two formulas. One is insanely pigmented and the other one requires a ton of buildup. We need to liven up the inner corners and under the brow. So I'm gonna be jumping back here into the Hello Charmer palette again for this gorgeous pop-up shade. This is a chunky toadstool, so knock off your brush. Some spells were meant to be broken and it looks like some of this green that has worked its way around keeps moving and now it's kind of coming down here to the edges. So I'm going to be cleaning it up with the palette I had earlier with some of these matte powders. I have a mascara wannabe in my collection that I've still not decided if it's in the boo bin or if this is something that I can use ongoing. This is the Laura Geller Fortifying Lash Primer. The word primer lets you know you can start with this and then add another mascara. However, I've had some of you in my coven tell me that you just use it as a mascara. Others have said, no, you have to use something else. So, conflicting witches reviews tell me I'm going to try it both ways. This eye, I'm just going to do just the primer. This side, I'm going to be adding another mascara on top of to see what works best. Because I know when I've tried this in the past, I did not love it. This side I'm going to leave alone, and then this side I'm going to add a little bit more of an Essence mascara. It's gonna be stealing the essence from my soul while I steal some essence from this bottle. Don't want it to dry down too much so it doesn't get too clumpy. I'm gonna go while it's still a bit wet. For my next trick on this Halloween special, I'm going to be going into the lips here. I'm going to be trying a new lip liner from Jouer that I got from the add-ons. This is the shade Rose Shimmer. The product is their Long Wear Cream Lip Liner. It is metallic. I did not know that when I got it because it did not tell me that it was metallic. 
So the only times I'm probably going to pull this little beast out is going to be All Hallows Eve or a special event. Before we go into this lip liner though, I'm gonna cast a magical spell that I've been wanting to share with my friends here. This piece of a potion is my Mellow Brow Definer. This one is in the shade taupe. However, as many of you know, I've already done the layers upon layers of my brows, although I'm probably still gonna do a touch up in a little bit. But what I'm gonna be using this for is to shadow the lips. I'm gonna take a little bit underneath and a little bit on top with my Cupid's bow, and this is going to plump the lip. This is called the Kylie Jenner Lip Plump Spell. You add a little shadow right there, and you add a little bit more on top. So sometimes it's gonna look like you just ate a chocolate frog and you got it all over your mouth. And if you like, if you got a little too bold or a little too harsh with the line, or if it's too creamy, just take a blank brush and blend ever so slightly. Next, you're going to take your liner of choice and go right inside of those lines. I've not tried this spell with a metallic lip, so we'll see how this goes. This is a very creamy liner. And then I fill in the lips except for the center part because that's where I want the main pigment that I'm gonna be putting down to live. But this gives it a nice base so that if you're eating or drinking your brew throughout the day, it doesn't all come off. You still have something there. Next, I have two tricks up on my sleeve. One of them is going to be a lip shade that I adore, and one is going to be perfect for the Halloween season to put on top. Many of you know I repurchased this because it has become a cult following here in my beauty witchy room. This is the Miami Fever shade from Ofra. I like to let this layer dry just a bit, and then I go in with my topper. Summon all of the winds so you can dry faster. And now you're ready for the topper. This is a shade that I did get in my boxy charm. I have since bought other shades from the add-ons because this is clearly not something I would wear on a ghoulie basis. This is Ch 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 Changes from the Enamored line from Marc Jacobs, but this is a perfect lippy to go with this ghoulish look this holiday season. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this on camera, but in person, you can see all of the reflective iridescent properties that are blue toned and green toned and their orange underneath that I have on is going really well with this eye look. This is not a basic witch makeup look. Keep that in mind, you've been warned. I took a DNA test and it turns out I am 100% that witch. Now I'm going to finish with the final touches and I will be right back. I keep getting lip gloss on my fangs. I'm very pleased with how the face makeup is looking. The bronzers, contours, and blushes look pretty nice. Did one of you witches just cast a spell on my light over there because everything just flickered? It is officially All Hallows Eve. Brew check. Take a sip. <sighs> However, I can tell you this witch is none too pleased about the eye look today. In the portal that is this camera and the monitor that I can see what you're going to be seeing, it looks just very dark. It doesn't look like it's got a lot of dimension to it, which is really disappointing. I do enjoy the lid shade. The shimmer green shade from the Ciate London palette is really nice. However, I'm still really disappointed that you do see some of the Zoeva brown tone back there, but I went back and forth blending and marrying and blending and marrying. You know how that spell goes. It's a long one. But this cactus green shade just isn't the same as, for instance, the Horizon shade or the Grand Canyon shade that I did use today on the lower lash line. That was really pigmented. It blended really easily and it was fast. This green cactus shade as pretty as the color is, the formula is kind of in the boo bin with me because with my skin, I'm really struggling to see because it's very patchy. I had to go back and forth a lot with blending. And again, when I said I just look like a skeleton with hollow eyes in my viewfinder right now, I'm hoping it comes across better once I do some magical editing. In person, it doesn't look as rough as it is right now in the camera, but this is definitely making a dark, doomy, loomy, scary 
frightening, haunting, daunting statement. The under eye color though, that orange shade is really coming to life and I feel like it's very much coming through. The mascara is not my favorite still. Either side isn't very impressive to me, so no matter which witchy way you choose to use this, whether you're using it just as a primer or just as a mascara, because I've heard both ways in my comments, in the portal that is YouTube, um, again, I have one eye doing one, one eye doing the other. Not very impressed. I tend to have really bad luck though when it comes to getting mascaras from BoxyCharm, because all the other ones that I should have received, and that I did receive, were dry. The highlight on my shoulders is really gorgeous and something I did not get to tell you that I do have on today that is a BoxyCharm item that I wore on the skin before we even started this video is this Iconic London Spray. This is a prep set and glow. I didn't use any of this on the face. I only used it on the body to give it a little bit of a juicy glow so you can kind of be lit from within. That is an easy spell to do. But the shoulders where I added that extra glow from Fenty are really doing a beautiful job in the camera and in person. The highlight on the face, the nose highlight is actually cute. I enjoy that. It's not making me look like I have a warty witchy nose. It's making it look really cute. But on the face, I just see face glow. I don't see highlight. Even though I did add a little touch of the purple dreams from Artist Couture, I'm just, I can see it if I hit it in certain lights. Like if I hold my face like this, like I'm stuck like a mannequin, then it's okay, I guess. Trick with the lip look where I did that liner right outside, made the lips look plumper, made them look juicier, made them look bigger. And I think it really did a nice job, especially since I'm kind of accenting that orange tone with the Miami Fever shade. But then we Halloweened it up with this iridescent -y gloss from Marc Jacobs. It doomed the lips to look like the eyes. It kind of gave it that depth, that richness, and the reflective properties that are in the eye look of greens and blues and things like that. But overall, I am very pleased with how the concealer covered the pumpkin gourd bumps that I have as my acne right there. And everything really feels in place. Nothing feels sticky, nothing feels tacky. The combination of all of these spells seem to work fairly well. The eye look is still pretty distracting and disappointing for me though. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this baby and even though it does smell like the children that I like to collect to eat on All Hallows Eve, I think this did a really good job with a different type of brush. So that was something I learned today. Something that I sort of like but don't know how long I will actually enjoy it is this Ace Beauté Matte Bronzer Palette. Using the two lightest shades with a fluffier brush did a much better job, but it is definitely a very warm toned bronzer. Um, the only way I could ever go into these was if I uh, were eyeshadows. They blended really well though. I'm much more impressed with them this time around than I was the first few times I tried this. The blush is nice, but this is a joke as a highlighter for me. I do enjoy it on my nose though. This may be the only way I use this if I do keep this in my collection for a very long time. Many of my coven here know I am not a witch that really enjoys the rosiness of the cheeks all the time, and I have a few staple pieces in my collection that I really love, and they help blur all of these witchy, pory imperfections. This mascara, as I just said, or a primer. I've tried it both ways at this point and each eye looks about the same. They're kind of starting to stick together. They started out really fluffy, but I think they look more stuck together. And the one that I used another mascara on and I used it as an actual primer, which is what it says it is, looks even worse than the one that doesn't have anything on it. My opinion only, but this is not my jam. Another thing going in my boobin was something that I made a little trick. I had no intention to actually use this today. I thought about it for a brief moment to use maybe one of the green tones as like a base shade to show you how much it took to lay it down, but after trying to get into this Ace Beauté Vintage Dawn and how long it took me to blend out the cactus shade, this was so disappointing. These orange tones really have a different formula consistency than this cactus shade, which is so disappointing because that's a shade that I really wanted to play with today. There's a wave of palette, did a beautiful job laying down a very nice transition shade. And I'll also give the Hello Charmer its credit. It did a great job of being blendable and smooth, 
So when I was starting to layer on top of it, I knew I had a good base. So the reason this didn't work was not because of this. It was because of it. The Ciate London palette. I only used one of the shades and it was this green shade. I think that is the life that I am really seeing with this eye look. It is the shimmer on the lids. It's the nicest piece of the eye look in my opinion. I enjoy this product for a variety of reasons and I've hit pan on it, which in a witchy beauty space is a major endorsement. But I've told you before, this is such a messy piece that it got all over my face and made me look even more dead. That's a bit of a boo, along with something that I do thoroughly enjoy. I've held on to this for so long because it is a really great cool toned brow pencil, this Universal Winky Luxe shade. However, I do not like to start my brows with it in the front because then they look really... It's harder to get a nice front part of the brow for me, especially if I would ever want to try some of those feathery loose looks and this just is not a pencil for that. It could fill in like the body portion, but not the front. I am pleasantly surprised and will give honorable mentions to this matte moisturizer from The Grown Alchemist is actually really helping me stay matte through this entire long spell that we've been doing together. And I'm very impressed with the Natasha Denona Transfer Matte Pore Vanishing Foundation. As you're getting in here, you can really see that there are no bossy upfront pores that you can see with your naked eye. That is a spell worth casting. And I'm pretty pleased with the base face. I thought this product might be a little bit of a hex for me, the Too Faced Loose Translucent Powder, but today it really impressed me with being able to set down all of the things I had going on, even though they were new to my collection and everything seems really put together. It seemed to be a good base for the bronzers. Nothing skipped, nothing moved. I'm very impressed with this. And I'll be honest, the first few times I tried it, I didn't have lukewarm feelings about it. So, it's gonna live to see another day. A lip liner that I'm just not sure I'm very in love with, mostly because of the type it is, and I didn't know that it was metallic, is this Jouer liner, but it is kind of fun for this festive season, but that would probably be the only time I would pull it out. I also was very skeptical of the Ciate London Everyday Vacay setting spray, but I think that's because a lot of times when I'm doing a lot of my BoxyCharm videos, there are so many dewy products that this just adds to the possible grease ball look that I can get into. But with all of these matte products, I'm actually able to use it and feel like it just helps benefit maybe the fact that this highlight had no highlight to it. Thank you so much to my beautiful coven out there for spending all Hallows Eve with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this killer video from BoxyCharm and I've given you a little bit of reminders about what is to die for and some things that are just a nightmare. The boo bin pile is still gonna stick around for a while but stay tuned and hit that dead bell so you don't miss out on future declutters because that is a fate worse than death in a beauty space, right? Happy Halloween, friends, and if you are new to this haunting channel, I hope you take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on all of these fun, loud, tempting, frightening videos I do every single week here on my channel. And if you are new here and you'd like to check out some of my previous videos, YouTube should be recommending some for you right about now, but if it's your time to go, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Happy Halloween, friends.